Hi, I'm Hasnain and today we're going to be learning about debits and credits. What are the rules behind double entry accounting and how do you establish what transaction is a debit entry and what's a credit entry? There's a really good technique which I'll be sharing later on in the video so please do watch and I hope it's useful. Let's go. Okay, so we're going to learn about debits and credits today. I want you to memorize two words for me. These are going to help you with the technique I'm going to explain a little further in the video. Dead click, right? Dead click, just remember those two words for me. Now, I want to explain some basics of accounting. Within accounting, you've got different transaction types. There are six transaction types that we are going to be working with. First, expenses. Expenses are basically the day-to-day -day running cost, the operating cost of the business. For example, your cost of sales, your rental expenses, your salaries, your light and heating cost, anything that costs the business money are termed as expenses. Second, assets. Assets are things that are owned by the business. It could be, for example, the building. It could be stock that you need to sell on. It could be the cash sitting in the bank. That's also an asset. It could be some receivables. These are assets. Then we've got drawings. Drawings are basically funds or money that the owner takes out of the business for personal use. For example, the owner of the business says, I want to take out £1,000 of the business for my personal expenses. That would be classed as drawings per the six transaction types. Now, I would like to give you a tip here. Drawings will never be an expense of the business. So do not post the drawings to the profit and loss statement. Okay. Transaction type number four is income. Income is basically the revenue or the money coming into the business from the products or services that the business is selling. So any money coming in, will be classed as income. It has to be generated from selling the product or the services of the business. The owner investing his money into the business is not part of income. That's capital. The next transaction type is liability. Liability is anything that is owed from the business to someone else. For example, when the business has to pay something, it's classed as a liability. It could be a loan, it could be a trade payable. Trade payables are when you pay your supplier for the goods that you've bought from them. And the final transaction type is capital. Capital is basically the money that the owner of the business invests into the business when it sets the company up. As I've mentioned earlier, just to recap, the money coming in through your income cannot be classed as capital. And the money coming in through your capital cannot be classed as income. They are both separate transaction types. Okay, so once you've understood these six different transaction types, I want you to understand one more thing. What is double entry? For every transaction that comes into a business, there needs to be two entries posted to the ledgers. You need to remember with double entry, there's always going to be a dual effect. That means that two different accounts will be affected by that transaction. One entry will be a debit entry and one entry will be a credit entry. Now you might be thinking what transaction type is a debit entry and what's a credit entry. That's where I want to bring in those two words that I told you to memorize before, which were dead click, right? These transaction types that we've just defined are basically part of this dead click. And this is how I learned double entry. It's a really easy technique for you to also understand what is a debit and what is a credit. Okay, so on the dead click, the D is for the debit side and the C is for the credit side. As you can see, the expense, asset and drawing is on the debit side. The income, liability and capital is on the credit side. I'm going to stress on one basic rule over here. And if you can grasp this, everything will make sense. Expense, asset and drawings are always going to be on the debit side by nature. And income, liability and capital are always going to be on the credit side by nature. If the value of any of these transaction type increases, it will be a debit. If the value 
of any one of these three transaction types on the credit side increases, it will be a credit. So what happens if these transaction types go down in value? As you might have already figured out, it's the opposite way around. So if an asset goes down in value, it will be a credit entry. If an income goes down in value, it will be a debit entry. This is a technique, right? Whenever you get a transaction, you need to ask yourself these two simple questions. Number one, what transaction type is this value? First, you establish what the transaction type is out of the six transactions we've just explained. Second question would be, has it gone up or down in value? Whatever your answers are will give you the symbol of the entry, whether it's a debit or a credit. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. Let's go over some examples and let's see if we can put it into a scenario. Let's say a business makes a cash sale of a thousand pounds, right? Now, let's look at the keywords over here. The business has made a cash sale of £1,000. What are we picking up from this sentence? We should pick up the value. What's the amount that will go into the journals? It's £1,000. Now, we know, per the double entry bookkeeping rules, this £1,000 needs to be entered into two different accounts. First, you'll need to establish step number one. What transaction type is sale? What has happened in this scenario? The business has made a sale, right? What sale? Sale is income. Remember on dead click, where does sales sit? It's sitting on the credit side. It means the business has increased its income by a thousand pounds. Because it's increased the value and by nature income is always on the credit side, if it increases in value, it would be credit income one thousand pounds. Now, Per double entry bookkeeping, we need a second entry for the journal to balance. What has physically come into the business? Cash, right? Cash, money, money. Money has come into the business. So what is money? What transaction type is money? Money is your cash sitting in your bank. What is the bank? It's an asset. What has happened to the asset? It's got £1,000 more in value it's gone up. So if the asset goes up in value, by nature it should be a debit. Now we understand where the other entry of the journal would go. It would be £1,000 debit to the bank. So what's your journal entry for this? Debit bank 1000 credit income 1000 And that's your journal complete for this scenario. Let's take another scenario on expenses. Let's say the business has paid it's billed for the rent expense for £500. What has happened? The business has paid £500. What has gone out of the business? Money, right? Money has gone out of the business. So it means the bank has come down by £500. If the bank, which is what? An asset has come down by £500. What has happened? Your asset has decreased. By nature, if the asset was increasing, it would have been a debit. But in this scenario, the asset is actually going the opposite way around. It's decreasing. So it's a credit. So we will say we credit the bank by £500. Now we need the second entry. What's the second entry? What has the business done? It's incurred an expense. What was an expense? An expense was the day-to-day -day operating cost of the business. That rent is your day-to-day -day operating cost. The expense transaction type has gone up in value. So by nature, if expenses go up in value, they will be a debit. So the journal is debit your rent expenses 500 and credit your bank 500. Okay, so that was today's video on debits and credits. I hope that was helpful for you. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe and see you in the next one.